Good morning, and thank you for choosing to worship with us this morning at Bloomer Baptist Church. Please open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 20, as we continue in this Armor of God series, which are two weeks remaining after today, I must remind you that God's armor provides victory while living in a spiritual battle. Every time, every true believer is a warrior. Every true believer is a warrior. And God's armor is our victory. Living by the word of God is victorious living. That's the main idea today. Victorious living equals living by the word of God. Living by the word of God equals victorious living. Today's application is simply this. Living a life of victory involves using God's word both offensively and defensively. To both block Satan's attacks and strike back, just like Jesus did in Matthew chapter 4. In other words, to use it as an illustration, the word of God being both offensive and defensive, as a knight uses the sword to both block and strike back at the enemy, we as soldiers of Christ are to use the word of God to both block and strike back at Satan and his attacks, his temptations, his schemes. Before we go further, let's read from God's word. Please stand and follow along as I read. Finally, let me encourage you, if you're at home, Stand there too. Let's all be part of this together. Let's honor God's word together. Let's see the mighty power in this word. Which says in chapter 6 of Ephesians verse 10, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand firm, stand there for, for having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me. That words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador in chains that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Paul states in verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The second part of this verse of the scripture is our focus today, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. As I said earlier, victorious living equals living by the word of God, which is of the spirit. To this point, every piece of equipment either gives greater stability or support, such as the belt of truth and having your feet prepped shod with the gospel of peace, or is directly defensive and protective, such as the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, and the helmet of salvation. The purpose of all of these is to enable us to stand firm and to stand strong against our great adversary, the devil, the evil one, Lucifer. And his schemes against us. However, unlike all the other pieces of God's armor, which we are told to put on, to take up, to use, the sword is the only piece that can be used both offensively as well as defensively. This is the only weapon of the soldier of Christ. 
before we go further, let's talk about the nature of this weapon, the nature of the sword. This would be the short sword, or in Greek, the makaira, a physical sword being explained or used as a spiritual illustration. Let's first talk about the physical. The sword mentioned here is a short sword as seen in this picture. It would be one carried by the Roman foot soldier. It's not the large, broad, long sword carried by heavy infantry or heavy cavalry. This is not the long, heavy sword of which one may think of from the movie Braveheart with Mel Gibson. The short sword would range in size from 6 to 18 inches, and it was the principal weapon in hand-to-hand -hand combat. A sword like the one from Gladiator with Russell Crowe. This here would be the type sword Paul was referring to. A sword like this. And as I played with my sword, I mean, as I practiced with this great weapon... It helped me to think through the application that we have here. I want you to look at the sword for a moment. Look how it shines the edges. Look at the length. Look at the style, the design. Look at how fast it moves. Faster if you're Russell Crowe, Gladius Maximus, or something like that. I hope I just said his name and not something else. You see, as I use this sword, I thought about a few things. Let's, let's, let's learn something here. Let's transition from the physical to the spiritual. You see, a combatant had to develop skill with this sword, or he would not survive. Just as in this movie Gladiator that we see from pictures here, we would see them practicing throughout this movie, practicing with the sword. They would practice to be precise. We too, as soldiers of Christ, must practice. We must study. We must practice. We must memorize and pray over the word of God to be prepared for times of war. The sword of God, which is the word of God, is a weapon that requires precision and boasts its offensive skill to block an enemy's attack. I'm sorry, defensive skill. And it's offensive skill to strike back. To not be accurate could mean the difference between life and death. To not know God's word in a way to use it appropriately and at the right time and for the right scriptural application could lead to great fall. The sword could be used defensively to block every jab, every thrust, every swipe of the enemy. But it could also be used offensively to make thrust and jabs against the enemy in return. We must use the word of God like the sword of a soldier. Use God's word to defensively block Satan's attacks, the temptations, the lures, the schemes, and offensively to attack back to send him away as well. Engage the enemy with the word of God. Engage the enemy with the word of God. Engage the enemy offensively. And defensively, a good and useful sword is a sharp sword. This sword is freshly sharpened. It is sharp. Just as the sword is always sharp and ready for action, our knowledge of God's word must always be sharp, ready for action, because Satan is ready for attack. The sword is short. We went over this earlier, but even though it's short, it is strong. As well, because we don't want it to break in the midst of battle. We must be strong in our knowledge of God's word. The sword is strong. We had some fun, Dean Bovey and I, one time. Just we were we were throwing tomahawks, hatchets at a target, a wood target, and we decided, hey, let's try that sword. So as we threw it, as we jabbed it, as we swiped it, it still survives. It's still here today. Is your knowledge of God's word strong? Is it ready for battle? Could it handle attacks of numerous types? Could you use it with such speed and precision? Are you prepared to use it both defensively and offensively? This is the soldier of Christ's weapon. One single swing with this sword can slice through a tree branch. 
a box, a telephone book, a piece of fruit like Fruit Ninja. Trust me, I know we tried it. The word of God can slice through all the attacks of the evil one. The word of God can, with one statement, one bold proclamation, block any attempt of Satan and his schemes to bring you down. The word of God both kills and saves as it kills the old, the sinful self and makes you new again in Christ. We must all practice with the sword. But we must not do this in our own strength, our own knowledge. We must use the word of God, yes, but we must trust the Holy Spirit in doing so. True strength comes through the realization that we are weak, weak without the presence of the word of God and the Spirit's help in understanding and application to our life. You see, the Spirit is what gives it power to our lives. The Spirit of God is what is within us to bring understanding of the word as we read it. The Spirit helps to remind us of the word or and helps to rightly apply it to our life. And at just the right times, too. The Spirit of God connects us to Jesus Christ and the Father God, whom is our help. See, the Spirit is a great helper for our life. We need His strength. We need not a real sword, but the Bible. We need not real armor for this spiritual battle, but God's armor for battle. Remember, victorious living equals living by the word of God. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Hebrews 4.12 tells us, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. 2 Timothy 3.16-17 tells us, All scripture... <clears throat> All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. You see, the devil, Satan, the evil one, Lucifer, he will try to manipulate God's word, twist it to deceive us just like he did in the garden with Eve. But we must know it well and trust the spirit in helping to precisely apply it and at just the right time and way. As one pastor said, every lie, slander, and deceitful effort of our enemy can be countered with the word of God if we know it and are willing to follow it. But if not, then we will soon be victims of his schemes. The word of God is what leads to victory. But the lack of knowledge may lead to great fall. This is but one reason why we must heed the warning found in 2 Timothy 2.15, saying, be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, handling accurately the word of truth. We don't want to fall. We want to have great victory, and that great victory for our life is found in God, in his word, in the Holy Spirit, in faithful living, in using the armor of which God gives us. And to use this armor appropriately, properly, we must not simply know where it is, we must take it up, put it on, stand up in it. In relation to the word of God, which is of the Holy Spirit, we must read it, we must meditate on it, we must study it, we must pray on it and proclaim it. We have Jesus' example here. Jesus knew the word and used it both defensively and offensively. When Jesus was tempted in the desert, going one-on-one -on -one against the enemy, against the devil, against Lucifer, the evil one, he responded to each attack in the same way. Jesus quoted the word of God. Hebrews 1.3 tells us Jesus sustains all things by his powerful word. Jesus and the word is powerful. Jesus was at creation. And look at what we have today. Jesus gives salvation. Look at what you have today. Listen as I read from Matthew 4, 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led up by the spirit in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. 
Then the tempter approached him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Notice Satan, notice the evil one. Notice how he tempted. He's called the tempter. This is how he schemes. This is how how he lures us away from God. (coughs) But Jesus answered, It is written, Man must not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. You see, the word of God, the Bible here, this is from the mouth of God. God inspired men to write these words. Then the devil, verse 5, took him to the holy city, had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written... He will give his angels orders concerning you, and they will support you with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Notice, Satan knows God's word as well, but he uses it to try and lure us away from God. To take our focus off of him, to distract us so that he might get a foothold. But Jesus told him, for Jesus knew the word better. It is also written, do not test the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, I will give you all these things if you'll fall down and worship me. Then Jesus told him, go away, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him and the angels came and began to serve him. Just as Jesus used God's word to send away Satan and his attacks, we too can send Satan away. We too can be victorious against Satan's evil schemes, the tempter. But we can never win this battle without God's strength, his armor, his powerful book, the Bible. We must weld the same weapon as Christ. We must have victorious living. By living according to the word of God. Don't make these words just idle words. Make them life words. Let's use the example of Jesus for our life. He is better than any of us and he used the word of God. Do you think you're better than the son of God? Do you think you're stronger? Do you think you're wiser? Do you think you're more capable of engaging an enemy of supernatural power? For this is exactly what you portray when you try to go to battle without the sword. Without the word of God and the spirit to give you wisdom, strength, power, and great understanding and application. Speaking of application, let's talk about some applications here. What do you struggle with? What controls you? We must use the word to combat Satan's schemes, these temptations, these struggles. Is it anger? Is it depression? Stress, confidence issues, lusting after desires of the flesh, pornography, drugs, alcohol, materialism, covetousness, jealousy, money, work, health. What do you struggle with? For God and his word must be the only thing which truly controls you in life. We must apply God's word to your problems and acknowledge Satan's schemes. Fight back. To have victory over Satan's schemes, you're falling, your problems, you must take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Slash away at the attacks, strike back. As a knight uses the sword to both block and strike back at the enemy, we as soldiers of Christ are to use the Word of God to both block and strike back at Satan and his attacks, temptations, and schemes. To know what the devil uses You know what the devil uses to draw you away from God. Do something about it today. Plan ahead. Write down scripture which is related to these struggles. Study these. Memorize these. Carry them in a pocket. Put them on your phone with reminders throughout the day. Make them part of your daily life. Do not allow the evil one to take you down without a fight. Pray these. Proclaim these. Do not turn your back and run. Stand firm and pick up the sword. Pick up the word of God. Engage the enemy with the weapon. Do battle with God's word. Don't allow this powerful weapon to sit on your dresser and just collect dust any longer. Practice the swordship skills. Stay in God's word with daily study, daily meditation, daily prayer. 
daily proclamation. Don't miss a step. Don't step backwards. Stand and step forward. Push forward. Engage the enemy with the truth. Notice that ending part two. Proclamation. Jesus proclaimed the truth of God's word to send the devil running. We must use the word of God to, one, be strengthened, and two, force the devil to flee. Verse John chapter 2, verse 14 says, You are strong, and the word of God lives in you, and you have overcome the evil one. We can use the word of God. We can... We can use the spirit within us. We can be strengthened. And James 4, 7 says, resist the devil and he will flee. Proclaim victory with the gospel over Satan, over his attacks, over sin. God's word tells us that we are saints. We are new. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are saved. We can proclaim this in victory. Proclaim hope to a dying generation. Tell them what you have. Do not do it alone. Do it in the strength of God and stand firm. Do it with proclaiming the word. Have victorious living by living according to the word of God. In closing, I have an idea for you to think about, to mention an observation here. Nowhere in the armor of God do we have mention of any type of equipment for our backs. Nowhere in the word of God, nowhere in this armor do we have mention of protection for our backs. Let us hold our ground against the evil one with our armor on and we advance forward with the gospel around the world. As one pastor said, God's word is a laser beam which kills to make alive. Let's pray and close in song. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for it is a laser beam which both kills and makes alive. It kills the old self and makes us new. We thank you for its protection. We thank you for its guidance, its wisdom, its discernment. We thank you for the strength and the peace we find within. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, which gives us the word, the understanding, the applications. We thank you that even when we do not have the strength, the Holy Spirit does and delivers what we need. Lord, we thank you for the great help we have in him. We thank you for the great help we have in you and in your son, Jesus. We pray these things in your holy and powerful name. Amen. Don't keep this powerful weapon in its sheath. Faith, truth, that we are at war, a spiritual war, and God's word is our sword. Live in it, sleep in it, walk in it, run in it, fight in it. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good.